keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to talk about L'Hopital's rule. Um, uh, this is how you spell it, L'Hopital. Uh, I think that some people put an S in front of the P. Uh, and then, yeah, you could have like this little hat, I think. Is it on the O? I don't know. Um, in any case, uh, that's, that's how I'll be referring to it, L'Hopital. So we're going to talk about L'Hopital's rule. Okay. Um, and L'Hopital's rule is about uh, evaluating limits when you get a specific type of indeterminate form. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's just start talking about some limits. So um, suppose we want to evaluate um, some kind of limit. Uh, so the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x. But maybe we have a problem. But uh, let's say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to 0, and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is also 0. So that means that we would have a special type of indeterminate form, right? the 0 over 0 indeterminate form. Uh, so this would give us uh, a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. Okay. Remember, indeterminate forms are a little bit different than when things are undefined. Um, when something is undefined, it doesn't make sense to define it as anything. You immediately get some kind of contradiction. But an indeterminate form uh, usually comes out of some sort of limit and usually means that um, it could actually be anything, depending on the context. So, so 0 over 0 actually could be equal to a lot of things. It could be equal to, to anything, pretty much, depending on the context. Um, so uh, in this case, we can use L'Hopital's rule. We can use L'Hopital's rule. That's how I'm, I'm going to spell it from now. I'm not going to bother with the, with the hat. Um, so uh, L'Hopital's rule uh, looks like this. Um, so we would have limit, the limit as x approaches a, of f of x over g of x, that's equal to, well, we keep the limit the same, the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. Super straightforward. So if you have a limit that gives you 0 over 0 indeterminate form, and there's a few other forms as well that we'll go over. Um, but yeah, if, if you have a, a limit that gives you a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, there's a trick. You um, differentiate the numerator and the denominator, and, and that's that. Um, so we have uh, another case, too. So we can also use uh, L'Hopital's rule. We can also use L'Hopital's rule um, if the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to infinity over infinity. Or in other words, uh, if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is infinity and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is also infinity. So if the numerator tends toward infinity, like if it blows up, Right, and the denominator also blows up. Then uh, you can you can just differentiate the the numerator and the denominator, and then take the limit again. And uh, as you can imagine, you can do this as many times as you want. Right, and we'll see some examples where where you do actually have to um, have to do that. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's try an example. Okay, so um, let's look at got a few examples here that we could try. Uh, yeah, let's do something simple. Um, let's try... Oh, yeah, this is, this is kind of like the canonical example. 
So, and, and you guys have probably seen this one before, um, and you've probably evaluated it in, in different methods. And that's kind of one of the themes of, of L'Hopital's rule, is that it's just another tool in your toolbox, right? So, so quite often in calculus, there's many ways of solving something. Uh, this is just one more way that you can solve a limit. So um, let's evaluate um, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. Okay, now, A lot of you probably know that that's just 1. Um, but uh, let's use L'Hopital's rule. So, uh, so the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x, that's equal to 0, right? And the limit as x approaches 0 of x is obviously 0 as well. So this uh, qualifies for L'Hopital's rule. So um, this, is, this is what I'd like you to write uh, when we're doing these. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x. That's equal to, and whenever you apply L'Hopital's rule, it's really important to say that you use L'Hopital's rule. Um, so what I like to do, and th there's several ways of doing this, um, but what I usually do is right on top of the equal sign, I write L dash H, just to tell whoever's reading this that I use L'Hopital's rule, right? Um, you can imagine, like, if, for example, I was marking a test, and then all of a sudden uh, you wrote that, you know, sine of x over x is equal to cos of x over 1. Like, that, it doesn't make sense unless you're applying uh, L'Hopital's rule. So uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, well, the der derivative of sine of x is cos of x, and the derivative of x is 1. Um, and I forgot, I forgot my limit here, so I'm just going to move this over. We've got the limit. Come on. The limit as x approaches 0 of cos of x over 1, well, now that's, that's very straightforward, right? Cos of 0 is equal to 1, so I've got 1 divided by 1, which is just 1. Okay, and that's, that's the essence of uh, L'Hopital's rule. Um, we can try a couple more examples. Um, let's do... Uh, yeah, let's do this one. Okay, let's try... Evaluate. Uh, let's see here. Yes, this one here. Okay. Uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over x squared. Okay. So remember, there's, there's two main types that you can use uh, L'Hopital's rule. It's 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. Yeah. For the one above, is the red the one yellow? Yeah, yeah. That was me checking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. That was me checking to make sure that we actually could use L'Hopital's rule. Okay. Right? So this means that we get the 0 over 0 type. Okay. okay. So if your limit is 0 over 0, then you can use L'Hopital's rule. Or if your limit is infinity over infinity, then that uh, gives you L'Hopital's rule as well. Okay, um, so we're going to evaluate this. Uh, well, um, so the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x, that's infinity, right? And the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared, that's also infinity. So this gives us the infinity over infinity type. So indeed, we can use L'Hopital's rule, okay? So I'm going to write the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over x squared is equal to, and I'm going to write L dash h. Well, that's equal to, well, the, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Oh, I, I forgot my, my limit again. So don't forget that it's actually still equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. We keep the limit there. We don't just get to differentiate and then call it a day. We, we're still taking a limit. Um, it's just a different limit. So uh, now, I, now I'll take the derivative, so e to the x and uh, 2x, okay? And you can probably see where this is going. Um, so again, I'm going to just do this. So the limit 
as x approaches infinity of e to the x, we still have infinity in the numerator, and we still have infinity in the denominator, right? We still get that infinity over infinity. So we can use L'Hopital's rule again. So you, you can use it as many times as you want, as long as at each stage of the process, you're getting either infinity over infinity or zero over zero, okay? So now I've got that the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over 2x is equal to, using L'Hopital's rule, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of, well, e to the x stays the same. The derivative of 2 to the x, or 2, two times x, rather, is, is just 2. And, well, this is, this is actually pretty straightforward to evaluate, right? That's, that's just infinity. Okay? Yeah? Um, well, yeah, I, I would say it's equal to infinity because we're talking about a limit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I've never heard of, of not being able to write equals infinity when you're talking about a limit. Um, I, I see where that's coming from. Yeah. So, I mean, it is tending towards... Uh, infinity, but that's that's kind of the the trick with a limit, right? A limit, you're not talking about a specific value. You're talking about where it's going, and where is it going? Is going towards infinity. So, I would just call it infinity. I would use the equal sign with infinity. Um, Part of me? No, you could put an arrow. I suppose. I I I think I understand what that means. Um, as far as I know, I've I've always just written infinity. Um, and I think in the literature too, it, I think it's pretty consistently uses the equal sign. But I can I can double check. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that for you. Okay, um, I want to do a slightly more complicated example. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's take a look at this question. Okay. Um, so this is this is kind of an in, in intermediate type of question. Um, it's actually almost exactly the same question that we just did. Uh, I, thought I, I thought I had a really good question. I don't know where it went. Uh, it disappeared in my brain. Um, but in any case, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this one. And I, I, I hope that you can see that this one doesn't immediately fall into L'Hopital's rule, right? As x approaches infinity, uh, x squared approaches infinity. And as x approaches infinity, e to the negative x approaches zero, right? So we've got ze infinity times zero. That does not technically uh, uh, satisfy L'Hopital's rule, right? So this is what I'm saying where you kind of have to massage it a little bit and, and kind of work it until it actually does work out that way. Uh, so without using L'Hopital's rule, I can say that the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared times e to the negative x is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared divided by e to the x. Well, I, I've just forced it into the, um, the denominator. And now, all of a sudden, um, I know that this guy is going to tend to infinity, and this guy is going to also tend to infinity. And therefore, I can do the same process that we, we did last time. I'm going to uh, use L'Hopital's rule, so I'll write equals L dash H. Um, the limit as x approaches infinity of, well, uh, this time I'm going to take 2x as my numerator and e to the x as my denominator. And they're still going off to infinity in both directions. So again, I'm going to say this is equal uh, using L'Hopital's rule. Limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over e to the x, which is 0. Okay? So that's kind of what I was saying, how you, you, can, you can kind of massage it until it actually fits into um, L'Hopital's uh, conditions. So um, this next one, we'll, we'll see how um, we can really work it with algebra to, to get something that totally looks like it has nothing to do with L'Hopital's rule. And we'll see that, that L'Hopital's rule actually does uh, come into play here. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's attack this one. So, as x approaches infinity, uh, this kind of approaches. Well, I'm gonna have one plus five over infinity, which is basically just one plus zero or one. So I've got one to the power of infinity. That kind of seems a lot like it should be just one, right? Because like one times one times one times one times one times, but right, it seems like it should just be one, but we'll see it's, it's actually not equal to one. And if, uh, if you happen to recall the, the definition of Euler's constant E, yeah. this looks a lot like that. So we'll probably get something that has to do with E, but uh, we're gonna have to sort of work with this for a little bit. Okay, so first of all, this is how we're, this is how we're gonna attack this one. And you may be asked to do something really similar to this uh, at some point. So I, I, I pay close attention. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll set y equal to one plus five over x to the x, okay? So uh, we're introducing our own, our own variable. So if we want, we could say, let y equal uh, one plus five over x to the x. Okay. Now, one of the one of the things that, that I don't really like about this is that we've got x in our uh, as an exponent, right? So let's let's bring the x down. So we'll take uh, the natural log of, of both sides. So we'll say uh, the ln of y is equal to the ln, or I should say, x times the ln of one plus five over x. Okay. So, so far, so good. Now I'm going to take the limit of each side. So I'm going to say that the limit, the limit as uh, x approaches infinity of the ln of y, that's equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the ln of 1 plus 5 over x. Oh, and times x, times x. There we go. Okay, so we're going to sort of leave this behind for now. So, so this portion of the equation we're just sort of going to ignore for the time being, and we'll come back to it. Uh, we're going to start sort of attacking this using L'Hopital's rule. So let's, let's see here. So I've got, uh, as x approaches infinity, uh, we have, well, x is going to go to infinity, so the limit as x approaches infinity of x, that's equal to, uh, well, infinity. And this over here, we've got the ln of uh, 1 plus 5 over x. So the ln of um, 1 is 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity of the ln of 1 plus 5 over x is, z is 0. So what I'm trying to say is that here we've got a situation where we've got infinity times 0, right? So that's, that's something that sort of fits into L'Hopital's rule. Infinity times 0 isn't one of the conditions, but we can massage it so that it is, okay? So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to take this x, and we're going to turn it into 1 over x, and have that as our denominator, okay? And then we'll be able to use L'Hopital's rule. So let's see what we get here. So this is all equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the ln of 1 plus 5 over x, all divided by 1 over x. Okay. Now I'm, I'm hoping that we can see that the top is going to 0, the bottom is going to 0. So now we can use L'Hopital's rule um, and, and simplify this. So this is equal to, using L'Hopital's rule, um, well, the derivative of ln of 1 plus 5 over x is going to be 1 over 1 plus 5 over x uh, times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be, what, negative 5x to the negative 2 all over the derivative of the bottom. Well, the bottom is x to the negative 1. Uh, where did the negative 5 come from? 
Uh, well, this is that th we've got an x to the negative one, right? Are we good? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make this five over x a little bit nicer. It looks ugly. Here we go. Five over x. Okay. And then on the bottom, we've got. Uh, uh, I think that's going to be negative x uh, to the negative two. Is that okay? More or less. Let's cancel some terms out. Um, so this uh, negative is going to cancel with this negative. Okay. Uh, this uh, x to the negative 2 cancels with that x to the negative 2. Um, so this is all equal to, and I don't have to use L'Hopital's rule for this part, uh, is going to be 5 times 1 over 1 plus 5 over x. And I've, I've made a fatal error here. Can someone point that out? I'll give you a hint. Yeah, exactly. I forgot to write my limits. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity. This is the limit as x approaches infinity. OK, that looks better. And uh, what do I get um, as I take this limit? Yeah, it's just five, right? This uh, this portion over here, this gets really big, so this gets really small. So I've got one plus zero as a denominator here. So I've got one over one times five. So I just get five. Okay. Now what was equal to five again? Oh yeah, this thing. Right. That's that's what five was. So let's uh, let's rewrite that. So I've got the limit as x approaches infinity of the lawn of y, that's equal to 5, OK? And well, I'm just going to uh, say this. Well, I've got that um, e to the limit as x approaches infinity of ln of y is equal to 5. Well, because I'm going to want to get this. Oh, I forgot. This should be e to, the, e to the 5. The reason I want to do that is because I don't care what ln of y is. I just want to know what y is. Okay? So I'm, I'm sort of, in, in a sense, I'm undoing the, the natural log there. Okay? So um, the nice thing about um, continuous functions is that um, if I take the, the limit of a function, it's the same thing as the, the, taking the function of a limit. So I can actually take this limit as x approaches infinity and, and pull it out of this continuous function. So, so hopefully this is something that, that you remember. It's, it's from uh, when we first started learning about, about limits. If you take uh, a continuous function, you have a limit inside that continuous function, you can pull it out of that continuous function. So what I'm trying to say is that this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the ln of y, which is equal to e to the 5. And e to the ln of y, that's just equal to y. So the, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of y is equal to e to the 5. And y was just the whole thing that we, we set out to follow, so, um, or to, to evaluate. So in other words, we had that the limit as x approaches infinity of what was it? The what was it uh, one plus five over x to the x equals e to the five. How do you do those last piece? So I think that the probably the, the source of the most confusion is probably going from here to here. Is that right? Yeah, and the last step where you substitute the Oh this this one shouldn't cause any uh Errors, because that's what I. That, so this is, this is the first thing I oh, that I said, right? Yeah, yeah. Y is equal to that, right? So that's where this one comes from. Yeah. The, so the first one. Comes okay. So just as an aside, so if f is continuous, uh, we can have that um, the limit as x approaches a of 
f of x is equal to f of the limit as x approaches a of x. So you can pull limits inside and outside of continuous functions. Okay. Only if they're continuous uh, at a. And since e is continuous everywhere, uh, we can take a limit inside and out of it at our leisure. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Because remember, the, the, like Euler's, Euler's constant is, is more of a function than it is a value. Like we think of it more as, as a continuous function than we do as like uh, a number, right? Because you can have like uh, a really similar function, like 2 to the power of x, but it doesn't have nearly the same properties as, as e to the power of x, right? e to the power of x is, is a, a very powerful function. So we, we think of it as an actual function. So, um, but I mean, the same would, could still be said if, if we had a different base. Like, for example, like if, if instead of e, like if we had 2 to the power of the limit as x approaches infinity, blah, 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 it would still work because 2 to the power of x is still a continuous function. Um, in any case, that's, that's why we were able to do it. Um, any other questions about, about this last example? It's kind of a, kind of a nasty one, but it, it does come up enough that I think it's pretty important to cover. Um, so basically, this 1 to the power of infinity, that, that you can use L'Hopital's rule again, but it's not going to be as simple as just, you know, taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. You're going to have to do the same type of process. Um, and then at some point, you're going to get probably 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And then you can use L'Hopital's rule. OK. So yeah, there's no way we're doing um, indefinite uh, integral, or sorry, improper integrals uh, today, because we've got about five minutes left. Um, so. How about you spend maybe the next uh, couple minutes uh, filling out that form on the website if you haven't already. Uh, I really would like your, your input on how you'd like to do this digital learning. Um, and uh, as you finish that, then um, let's work on, let's do, let's do all of the odd exercises for 10.1, okay? So homework, oops, homework. All odds on 10.1. I think that's page 440. Where is your thing on the website? It's right on the home page. Um, yeah. So if you just go to the home page, it's oh. right, uh, right at the top. Yeah, COVID-19 announcement. <laughs> 